Last time we had started looking at polynomial equations, um, and uh, we had looked at one way of taking a um, three term or a trinomial equation and factoring it. And um, I called it the AC method, and I told you it kind of feels a little bit funny right now to talk about it as the AC method because A is always one in the examples we're doing. Uh, effective tomorrow, that's going to change. So everything we do today is still going to have that one as the coefficient of our x squared term. Um, but I want to show you one other way to do um, factoring. Again, there's, there's more than just these two ways, but there's the two I'm going to show you. And you can choose which one you like. So if you liked the AC method last time, fabulous. If you didn't, then there's another option that I'm going to show you now. Okay, so this method, for lack of better terms, is what I'm going to call trial and error. Um, when I learned algebra, this was the only thing that was ever taught to me. I didn't know anything else existed. There was nothing else available. Um, and in some cases, this works really well. It's very nice. Um, and in these particular situations where the coefficient at the beginning is 1, that's actually one of the cases where it is very friendly. So these are the same problems we had last time, all right? So number 5 is the same as number 3 was, and number 4 is, that should say 6, number 6 is the same as number 4 was. Copy-paste, crazy stuff. Okay, same problems, but I want to show you how to use trial and error. Okay, so if you're looking at the first one and you're using trial and error, what you're going to do is you're going to start out by simply writing down two sets of parentheses. Okay, you still need the equal zero. Don't leave it off. The whole thing still equals zero. The first term in each set of parentheses is simply going to be your variable. So if the variable is u, you're going to write u. x, you're going to write x. And notice, if you were to multiply these two together, you get the first term in your trinomial, right? Always going to happen. All right, the next part of this is to take a look at the last term. It's the 10. I need two numbers that multiply to 10. And look right here. This says they have to subtract to 7. Was this? Yes, negative 5 and negative 2. OK? Negative 5 times negative 2 is positive 10. Negative 5 plus negative 2 is negative 7. And then you set each part equal to 0 to solve. So in the first one, we're going to add 5 to both sides. So u is 5. On the second one, we're going to add 2 to both sides. So u is 2. And those are the same two solutions that we got with considerably more work using the AC method last time. Okay. Now you may not always trial and error and try the right thing the first time, so there's always that possibility as well when you're doing trial and error. We had Josh giving us the right answer, which was amazing. Um, but maybe when you're trying it on your own, you don't always choose the right one to start with. So you have to try multiple things. All right, let's try the other one. The other one is w squared plus 10w plus 25. So I start with my parentheses equals 0. What will I put in first? W's. Um, the beautiful thing on this one is notice how everything's all positive. Yeah, so I'm going to have positives. Then I need the 25. I need two numbers that multiply to 25 and add to 10. Yeah, 5 and 5, right? Again, we set each part equal to 0. And I realize that those are the same statement twice. That's OK. We actually call that a double 0 when it happens. Um, and so w equals negative 5 on both of them. questions on that process? Um, it doesn't matter to me which one you use. I know, I know I've said that multiple times, but I do really mean it. So if this is something that you like, um, then go for it. It's definitely less writing. Um, it becomes less user-friendly when the coefficient in front's not a 1, which is actually the reason I wanted to show you this one. Because when we get to talk about this one again tomorrow, it becomes a lot more meaningful when that number at the beginning is not a 1. Right now, it almost feels just like a lot of writing for nothing. 
Okay. All right. We're going to do this process in reverse next. This is the last thing in this particular lesson. So we're going to take this idea of um, having an equation given to us and us finding the solutions. And we're going to start with the solutions and go backwards to find an equation that matches it. So we are given the solutions to the polynomial equation. And we're going to go backwards. So to start with, I'd kind of like for you to take a look back at the ones we just did and to notice the relationship that happens between the solution and the factor itself. How are those related if you just look at them visually? The sign switch. switch, right? They almost look the same except the signs are reversed. In the first one, the top one that I've highlighted here, I've got a negative 5 and the bottom one ends up being a positive 5. So as we do this problems, we're going to take a look at having, they call them roots. Roots just means solutions, okay? And they start by giving us two solutions, and then they talk about a leading coefficient stuff, but let's, let's deal with the, the solutions part first. So what Karen said was exactly right. The 6 is a solution, so pick a variable if you like. I'll go with x. So x minus 6 will be one of my factors. If negative 3 is a solution, what will the other factor be? Okay, not just positive 3, but yeah, x plus 3. Right? It'll switch the sign. Now, the fact that it tells you that the leading coefficient is 4 simply means that out in the very front of all this, I'm going to have to multiply by a 4 to get it to not be x squared, but to be 4x squared when I'm done. Okay? So you're just going to multiply by the leading coefficient part of that. And you're going to set this equal to 0. But we're not solving, right? We already knew the solution. Instead, we're going to be multiplying everything back out and to find what the equation would have been originally. So I'm going to take each term. We're going to save the 4 till last. Please do. It'll make things so much easier. We're going to take our first term, x, and we're going to multiply it by the first term here. So that's x squared. Then I'm going to multiply my x times 3, which gives me a 3x. Then I'm going to multiply my negative 6 by x to give me negative 6x and negative 6 times 3 to give me negative 18. Again, don't go multiplying about that 4 too soon. Clean things up first. Makes your life lots easier if you do. So here's the 4. I have x squared, then what? Negative 3x and negative 18. And then the last thing to do would be to distribute the 4 through. So I have 4x squared minus 12x. And then somebody with a calculator tell me what is 4 times 18. What was it? 72. 72. So I have negative 72 at the end equals 0. <coughs> Look good? Okay, so we're going to try another one. This one has roots of 5 and 2. So what will that look like as factors? Now 
not just negative 5, but x minus 5, right? And what else? x minus 2, thank you. And the other part of this, they tell us that it has a leading coefficient of 2. So what is that telling me to do? Multiply everything by 2. Please remember to set it equal to 0 to make it an equation and not just an expression. And then we're going to distribute. The first x times x gives me x squared. And then that x times negative 2 would be negative 2x. On the inside, the negative 5 times x would give me negative 5x. And then my negative 5 times 2 would give me 10. I'm saving the 2 till last. What is it going to clean up to on the inside of my parentheses? Ooh, we saw that earlier, didn't we? Yes, we did. And then we can distribute our 2. So it's 2x squared minus 14x plus 20 equals 0. Any questions on that?